Hello everybody, this is Claudia Bayer, La Alemana con I'm Latina, and I'm here with Olga Maria Tchaikovsky, and she is Cuban and Puerto Rican descent, and she is an international public relation specialist, I'm going to call her right now. Um, hi, Olga. Hi, how are you, Claudia? Fantastic, enjoying the cool weather here in London, actually, compared to the <laughs> hot weather in Rio the last week. <laughs> so... Uh, since we only have about 20 minutes today, I want to make sure that the audience gets the most out of you. So can you tell us a little bit about how you grew up and what were the values that helped you um, become the person you are today? Well, I grew up in Puerto Rico, in Bayamón, with my mother and my grandmother. And um, actually, the values, uh, they showed me, like, always to, to, you know, to fight for what I want. I think my, my mom is a very strong woman who raised her three kids alone. She was a single mother, and I respect that a lot. And I saw all the struggles she had to go through uh, to, to be, you know, always... Uh, give me the best life she could, and I'm very thankful for that. And uh, because of her, I think I am the woman you know I am today. Mm, very nice, very nice. And what are the let's say if you can think of three values that shaped your life? What were what would they be? Um, I think the respect uh, uh, for others. Uh, I think giving back. Uh, was one of the biggest values my mom taught me. She always taught me to give back you know, no matter what, no matter to who, and to do it from my heart. And um, this is why I think I'm now, you know, I always involved with so many charities, and, and, and that's one of my, I think, most important things. And the rest, I think, to be honest, because I feel like uh, you have to, in order to succeed, you don't. You should not be, you know, a person that is always lying or is stepping over other people's toes. I think I'm always distinguish myself to be honest and straightforward with people. Mm -hmm, very nice. Now, um, you've been into, well, actually introduced. I don't know. Yeah, introduced and recommended to me uh, by Carlos uh, La Cruz, who is someone else I interviewed. And um, you have an incredible background, especially in public relations, event management, event promotion and stuff. Can you mm -hmm. tell us a little bit more about that? Because that, there's a lot of wow moments I remember when you told me that the first time. Sure, yeah. Um, well, in reference to Carlos, I definitely want to thank him a lot. He and I were working in a book. Uh, about uh, Puerto Rican recipes, and it's gonna have a lot of my stories since uh, since my childhood. With which each recipe is gonna be in Spanish and in English, and that's coming up soon. And Carlos and I have collaborated many events where he had, you know, uh, worked with me um, with my other clients uh, from fashion shows. Uh, we did together Latin Fashion Week. Uh, we have done several things. And uh, my company, uh, Dreams in Hills PR, we focus at uh, in pretty much uh, providing small business that platform. Either is they want to target the Hispanic consumer or is they want to target the American market. We do both. We are bilingual team of PR professionals, and we do um, not only branding, we do uh, social media, we do uh, marketing, and we build that bridge between those markets and, and, and help the client to, uh, to pretty much create a story and uh, we take care of their image. Mm -hmm. And what is, let's say, um, when you think of your life, what was the biggest success that where you felt this is really the biggest success for me so far? Mm -hmm. The one that you're most proud of? Uh, there are several, I think maybe becoming an entrepreneur was one of them, but I think maybe winning the Next Generation Latina Award, I think that was a big a big uh, success in my life. I had the opportunity to be recognized by Latina Magazine and MasterCard, and they gave me this award as a Next Generation Latina for portraying a, a strong woman who's making a difference, and uh, a businesswoman, and that was such an honor to me. I was expecting uh, that, and I, th I think that was one of the biggest success. Okay, and who is the Next Generation Latina? Well, the next generation Latina is a woman who not only keep up with her roots and her traditions, but also is a strong woman who's making a difference, who's giving back, who is uh, a fighter, who uh, works for uh, not only with the community, but also like entrepreneur, a businesswoman, 
um, a sister, uh, uh, you know, a daughter. It's, it's, it has, you know, all these different qualities. Uh, I think it's, it's about keeping that balance between work, life, and, and also giving back. Beautiful. And what helped you find your bliss? I mean, what you're doing right now, um, from what I'm getting, you're enjoying it a lot, right? Yes, I do. Uh, what I do is, is my passion. And I think always since I was a child, I love communications. I always love helping people. I love uh, meeting people from all kinds of uh, cultures. I think that always been something that I love. And I, I am, everybody knows me and call me a connector because I'm those kind of people that I can connect ideas, I can connect people, brands, and I think that's one of my my biggest talents. And um, uh, I just I just love what I do. I love helping businesses to see. I I love they're like my baby to me because I see them get to the next level, and to me that's my own success. Beautiful, very nice. And uh, can you tell us maybe one challenge that you have been able to turn around? Something that in the initially seemed almost impossible, but then you turned it around and it actually helped you even more in your career, for example, your business or your life. Um, I would say English was. <laughs> oh I yes, yes. Work, I didn't speak English. I was only 18 years old, and I, I think it was very challenging to me leaving my family. Leaving what I was used to, you know, leaving everything I had to come here to the United States alone. And um, I actually in Puerto Rico, you know, they teach English, but it was very basic and I never really practiced it or I didn't understand. So when I came here, I only knew how to read English, but I didn't know how to express myself. And to be honest with you, that was the most frustrating thing ever because you know how you feel when you don't understand what people are saying. And it got to the point I understood, but I didn't know how to answer them back. So mm -hmm. that really was a big, big, big challenge to me. Yeah, I know how that is. The first time I uh, was around, uh, first time I was in Spain actually, I had absolutely no idea about Spanish and then everybody was speaking Spanish and some people wanted to dance salsa with me. At that time I had no clue how to dance salsa. I didn't even know how to dance marenga at the time. I, didn't, I was just able to move, that's it. Um, <laughs> so that was kind of frustrating and I actually kind of got put back to the same or similar place when I went to Rio now a couple of weeks ago and not the same language but new language but same thing again when I was uh, with, the, with the family of my of my boyfriend we were it was very very interesting it was very everybody was very loving very much like uh, the families that I've been with uh, let's say from Mexico or uh, oh, yeah. from Spain or so very very loving I didn't, like, I didn't really get much. I got a little bit here, a little bit there, especially when they made fun of each other. But <laughs> um, <laughs> but expressing myself, my biggest oh, challenge was instead of saying obrigada, the first word that came out of my mind was gracias. Like, <laughs> anyway, so I, I do I, I do get that how how that feels. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's a, it's a, it was it was definitely a challenge, and I think also not having my family around me, you know, their support. Even though I spoke with them every day, it was it was hard, you know, leaving everything that you was raised around behind. Mm -hmm. Very nice. And how did you actually make that challenge something that actually made you grow even more? Um, I think that, I mean, always my focus was, I, I love traveling, I'm an adventurous person, and I always dreamed about, you know, meeting different cultures, traveling the world, uh, create, doing my own business, and one of the things I wanted was finishing my school, so I knew if I wouldn't learn English, I couldn't do none of the things that I really was passionate about, and I started taking ESL classes while I was working, and at the time I was working two jobs, and it was pretty, you know, tough, the balance between studying and everything, it was like no sleep at all, but that's what I wanted, so I kept going, and that actually, uh, I think it can make me grow so much because I passed through different jobs, to different um, opportunities in life. I kept meeting people, people that helped me, mentors. And this one advice I can give to anybody is that it's always great to have a mentor because the mentors really make, there were angels in my life that really uh, guide me through the process of, of being a better writer or speaking better or learning new things. And uh, that support, I think, was what it took me to the next level until I could enter more my industry, which was more fashion, beauty, lifestyle, entertainment, and I started volunteering with different uh, causes and different events, 
And that's how I ended up being an entrepreneur and founding my own company in 2011. Very nice. So you went from interpreter to public uh, relations, no? Well, I am an entrepreneur because I'm the founder oh, entrepreneur, of right? mm -hmm. Neil's PR. Yeah, I'm a woman entrepreneur. Um, yeah, that's how I, I, you know, I start. I pretty much like started my company because mm -hmm. I know that I noticed that working with other companies, doing PR, doing marketing. I used to host red carpet events. I was doing a little bit of modeling as well, and I noticed that uh, a lot of companies were all about the money but they were not about giving back and helping others and my mission and my vision with my company Dream Singles PR is that I not only want to help small businesses grow and I want to have a business but I want to be, I, my company is socially conscious we believe in giving back we work with so many charities for causes like domestic violence, uh, homelessness uh, we have worked with uh, breast cancer, and we always tie every event we have. We tie somehow with some charity. We just did actually my annual birthday for a cause in December, and we mm -hmm. gave back to the victims of the typhoon in the Philippines. So that's something very, very important and close to my heart. Beautiful, very nice, very nice. Um, I'm trying to remember the, the question. I had a question in my mind. Mm -hmm. What's that question? I'm gonna slip my mind now. Um, Let's see. What I, maybe I can put another question. So, uh, what do you believe is something that the Latino community, especially in the states, needs to focus a little bit more on? Um, what do you mean that they need to focus a little bit more on? And um, let's say, for example, to bring out more leaders, for example. Okay. Um, I think. You know, it's, it's a few things probably. Um, I think one of them is probably in in the education. I feel uh, I feel like sometimes uh, I don't know how to spell like the Latino community sometimes could be uh, a little bit close-minded about certain things uh, that we were raised a certain way. Uh, and I feel like a lot of like, especially I would say women, they don't take certain opportunities that they could take. I think it's starting to change. But there's still a lot of women that were educated in a way like uh, they don't really fight for what they want. They think that the, the everything has to be the traditional way of being married, having kids, and doing the same thing over and over. And sometimes they have dreams, and I feel they, they don't pursue them. You know, they are not, uh, they don't take that, like you said, that leadership and that, and that um, um, how can I say that, you know, that they don't focus on that. They think that everything is only, oh, I'm going to have a marriage, I'm going to have kids, and you know what, my dream doesn't matter, let me just throw it to the side. And I feel everybody, to be happy, uh, they should find their purpose in life, they should find why they're here for, what you should do to make not only the Latino community better, but your life better, and every and everybody else, you know, around the world. And I think, uh, uh, you know, I, will, I would love to encourage more women to take that initiative too to find that, that dream, that purpose, and to follow it, and to don't be scared, to know that there's no limitation, that everything that you think is possible, you could make it happen. You could, you just need to believe in it. Beautiful. Well said. Very nicely said. And actually, now the question came back to me that I wanted to ask you earlier. Yeah. Um, how did you know that you wanted to be an entrepreneur versus go into a job or start, and go, start something, start a career in the corporate world? How did you know that that was the right thing for you? Actually, because I started working in corporate, I was working, you know, in the regular nine to five, you know, office job at, at the beginning, and I really, I don't know, it wasn't for me. I didn't like it. I think that I'm a person that I'm very creative and very adventurous. I like to, I don't know, like to follow my passion, to do different things at different times. I, I'm a person that I'm always working. I would say 24/7. You always see me meetings or here or there. Doesn't matter the time. Doesn't matter the day of the week. And I liked it that I like that 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 freedom of making my own schedule, of being able to help people when I want it, of uh, I don't know, have a little bit more control of my life. I think mm -hmm. that the regular routine nine to five, it got to the point that I felt like I knew the job so well that it became automatic mode. I felt like a zombie that was just there every day coming to work, doing the same thing, and I wasn't, you know, challenging myself enough. So I think I'm I'm a, you know, I like to challenge myself every day more. And learn more, and explore more. That's who I am. Very nice, very nice. Mm -hmm. uh, is there? Could you share maybe uh, a story from uh, when you were not living in the states yet, 
where you have learned a very big lesson, something that you think is important for everybody to hear. Hmm. When I wasn't in the States? No, when you were not in the States, yeah. When I was not in the States. Hmm. Mm -hmm. Question. Um, actually, I think to me, the, I think the biggest lesson probably when I was like uh, 17 or something, I was like a little bit like, I don't know, I just felt like I wasn't totally, um, I don't know, happy where I was. Like I was felt like I was used to do everything that was happening around me and, and I wanted something more. And I think to me, I think the biggest uh, lesson and everything was at that moment that one day I got, I got very sad and I was feeling like a little bit like, I cannot say depressed, but kind of, you know, when you just don't want to be in a place or you feel like, I don't know, like the things are not going the, the, the way you expected. And I think uh, one day I opened a book by my favorite writer, Paulo Coelho, and I read mm -hmm. a book that says, sometimes in life you have to leave the things that you have become used to to obtain what you really want in life. And to be honest, that changed my life because I thought about it. I said, you know what? I got used to my family. I got used to being Puerto Rico. I got used to be here. But what I want, it goes beyond this. Like I love my island, but I wanted to find something else. And I just went in search for it. I literally packed my luggage and I left when I was 18 years old. And uh, actually, I left like a month after I read that quote. So it was very, very challenging, very crazy because I didn't know anybody here. But I did it and I made it happen and I started from you know from nowhere, from zero, from uh living in a room, from being in Puerto Rico in my big house, from you know, I think it's, it it was it was a big lesson in my life, you know. It was. Yeah. Very nice. Um how do you like people to get in touch with you on Facebook or via your website? Actually, um, I'm pretty accessible. I'm everywhere, I would say. Um, they can find me. I'm in Instagram, in Twitter as at Olga Maria, D I H P R. They can go to our website, which is D I H P R dot com. And um, also, I am on Facebook. They can find my company, Dreams in Hills for Relations, on Facebook. And I am as well, have my, my page, uh, Olga Maria Tcharkovsky, which is C Z A R K O W S K I. Mm -hmm. Now tell us, uh, as the final thing, how did you end up with that name? I know you told me, but how did you end up with that <laughs> name? <laughs> well, uh, actually, my my husband, my better half, he's actually from Poland. He's from Krakow, and um, that's how I ended up with the name. Um, <laughs> Very nice. Fashion Week, and here we are. <laughs> and I think, uh, can, can you also explain the other part, the Olga Maria? I mean, Maria is pretty, sounds pretty Latino to everybody. Um, but the Olga part, at least to me, I, I wasn't aware of that. It, to me, it was very Eastern European. So can you explain the little story that you shared with me earlier as well? Sure, yeah. My, my father, actually, he's Cuban. And um, my father, you know, in, in Cuba where there's a lot of Russians, so Olga I think became a popular name over there because of that. And it was this uh, singer that he was friends with, a uh, famous singer from Cuba called Olga Guillot. And her daughter's name is Olga Maria, and he loved, fell in love with the name. And that's how I ended up being Olga Maria. <laughs> <laughs> Very so, nice. And everybody get confused. They're like, that's a Russian name, <laughs> Ukrainian name. Where are you from? <laughs> Yes, that's beautiful. Thank you so much. Um, if, if you guys have any questions for Olga, uh, Olga Maria, simply put a comment underneath the video or contact her uh, directly. Uh, get to know the next generation Latina. That's all I'm going to say here. And thank you so much. <laughs> thank you so much, Olga Maria. It was lovely getting to know you. And I'm pretty sure we're going to stay in touch. Yes, we will. Thank you so much for the interview. And thank you for Carlos for introducing me. It was amazing. <laughs> definitely, definitely. Big shout out to him. All the best. See you guys very soon. All right. Ciao. <laughs>